Good morning. Just pulled into this parking lot here and I'm seeing there's a ambulance here. Oh no. I wonder if somebody's hurt. Um, oh, nobody's hurt, but uh, right there you can see this magnet. There is only one Holy Bible. KingJamesVideoMinistries.com or KJVM.org <laughs> It's the uh, the ministry ambulance, I guess you could call it. Um, or fire rescue truck is the technical term for it. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know the story, I'll just tell it real quickly. Uh, had to do a 4,000 mile trip out from Maine, out to Iowa, then down to West Virginia to see some relatives there, to Pennsylvania, when my parents, when my father was still alive, and then back up to Maine. 4,000 miles, we did it in that. And my wife had a bunch of things out in Iowa from her parents' place that um, we needed to get in the trailer. I was pulling an enclosed trailer behind it as well, so did great. It's a big 7.3 Cummins turbo diesel in the thing. And uh, just was like there wasn't even anything behind it the whole way out. Really good vehicle, amazing vehicle. Um, so, anyhow, um, why do some Baptist pastors, or many Baptist pastors rather, act like Freemasons? Uh, tell you a little story relating to those bumper magnets, those magnets there, not bumper magnets, those big magnets. Back before I had the ambulance, um, I had a, a Ford Ranger pickup truck. It was in really old videos. Dark purple Ford Ranger. And uh, the one time I, I had those magnets, I made those magnets. They were on the sides of the, you know, the doors of my Ford Ranger. And um, I used to do to uh, bank at a Katahdin bank in the town of Mars Hill, Maine north of where we're at right now. And this particular bank was rather interesting because it was a bank on the bottom floor and a Masonic Lodge on the top floor. I kid you not. Of course, there's no connection between the two. Banking and Freemasonry, there's no connection. Don't worry about it. But uh, the one time I pulled into the bank, I was getting ready to go in, and this older guy comes walking up, and he, he's got this, you know, this wide-eyed, real weird looking and he said you know he said that's exactly true what you have on your on your magnets there and I said yes it is and he just said I agree completely with that and he was all you know just kind of weird and I you know I just I talked to the guy for a little bit there's absolutely no spiritual you know door there to witness to the guy it just didn't go anywhere and you'll have that. I mean, when you're a, a good bath like what you witness to everybody because you get your little lines that you memorize and you can say it, you know, just right. So everybody gets to hear the gospel or something. Well, no, they get to hear your lines. If the Holy Spirit is not there when you go to witness to somebody, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, the Holy Spirit has to convict of sin and call somebody. And there are times I've, I've had great opportunities to witness to somebody just randomly, boom, out of nowhere. And uh, people start talking to me about the magnets or about whatever, and I get a chance to witness. The Lord gives me that opportunity. And I just, uh, I love it when that happens. But, you know, I used to be in part of the Baptist system. You know, you get onto the thing of you go and you force it. You know, you, you force feed people the, the gospel, you knock on their door, they come to the door, they don't want to talk to you, they don't, you know, they have things to do and whatever else. They're not in a talking mood, but it doesn't matter, brother, I'm there to preach the gospel. And you talk to the people and they're just kind of listening to the spiel that you're giving and, and then they finally just say, uh, okay, yeah, I'm not interested. Anymore. Well, but you need to think about eternity, and you're just supposed to learn those lines too. What do you do when they say no? And <clears throat> you know, you try to get them into the church, you know, so that they can hear the gospel. <laughs> it's such a backward, stupid system. This whole church building thing, you know, 
get them to come to church so they can hear the gospel. Talk about being contrary to the New Testament. Uh, you come into church when you've heard the gospel, when you are saved. That's when you are in church. You know, in the church of the living God. <sighs> but no, not when you're a Baptist. You know, you get lost people to come to church. No scripture for it at all. And then you say, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. No, you're not either. The uh, independent fundamental Baptist system is full of pride and full of arrogance and um, contention and strife and all the other good stuff. But on that note, I have seen this happen many times um, with Baptist pastors where you go to them about some kind of a sin issue or some kind of a thing in the, in the church and they'll cover it up if it relates to certain people. They will. Um, I have uh, seen it in a couple of sermons I have on DVD with Dr. Peter Sturgis Ruckman, Peter S. Ruckman. Um, I've learned a lot from the man, great respect for the man, but he covered up things and uh, admitted to it. People come to me with this stuff about Brother Hiles, you know, Brother Jack Hiles, and, and uh, oh, you know about this, and you know about that, and whatever. And, uh, and he'd, you know, listen, uh, child, or whatever, if God, if I knew everything about you that God knows about you, I'd probably get sick and puke or something. Well, all of sin, I get that. I understand that. But you know, there is such a thing as church discipline. And Jack Hiles, um, had a lot of issues, a lot of very serious sin issues. His own daughter came out and said about how that, you know, my father hated my mother and that he cheated regularly with uh, Jenny Nishik. I've done the studies on Jack Hiles, you can check into it. Uh, Jack Hiles, like a good Freemason, covered up for a member of his church that actually went to jail because of, uh, molesting children on the bus route. It's okay though because he was a faithful soul winner. As long as you're a soul winner in the Baptist system, you can get away with all kinds of stuff. Had a, knew a guy many years ago, little eight year old daughters, twin daughters, and the uh, King James only Bible believing in all matters of faith and practice. A uh, pastor was molesting his two little girls, touching them and things inappropriately. And, um, you know, I remember hearing some guy say the one time about the, the molester there in uh, the Hiles situation. He said, oh, he said, those children, they made that up. They did that they, on purpose to make the guy look bad. Um, I don't agree with that. You see, um, Children have a very hard time talking about something like that. And I don't believe that children would make that up. And if they did, why did the guy get convicted and go to jail? You know? And uh, by the way, where does the Bible even say that you're supposed to go get other people's children and bring them to a building called a church? Where's it at in scripture? It's not there. But like a good Freemason, you know, this Baptist pastor that was molesting this guy's daughters, all the people came and they said, I mean, let's just kind of handle this within the church. Let's not go to law about this. But he did something illegal. What do you mean handle it inside the church? See? What goes on in the church stays in the church, apparently. But, um, you know, another thing that's disturbing is uh, a lot of these Baptist, Baptist pastors, including Peter Ruckman, um, they were great admirers of Sam Jones. And there's a bunch of other guys out there, uh, modern Baptists, and they love Sam Jones, and they have posters of him up and everything else. Different people let me know about this. Uh, Spencer Smith on YouTube uh, puts out some good information as far as I know. Maybe he's just completely ignorant, but he's got posters of Sam Jones, the Methodist uh, uh, preacher. You're going to say um, revival preacher or whatever. 
But uh, Sam Jones, I mean, just read the life and sayings of Sam P. Jones by his wife. His wife wrote the book. And she talked about him being, you know, a Freemason in there. He's a Masonic Knight. Uh, that's a problem. You cannot serve two masters. And, uh, you know, a lot of people pointed out the fact that Peter Ruckman, on his lapel, in sermons later on in his life, he's got a little double-headed eagle. You know, and of course the answer for that is that, well, the double-headed eagle is, is on the flag of Austria, um, and Ruckman, his family ancestry goes back to Austria. So that's why he's wearing that. Well, that's what I would say, because I've never seen any proof that he was a Freemason. Um, but, you know, he's from the Southern Baptist Convention. Southern Baptists are, a lot of those are Freemasons. You know, and I remember he wrote in one of his books about, uh, kind of made fun of people that talk about the Masonic Conspiracy. I remember reading that quote years ago and it really shocked me and I thought, why would he say that? Well, because there was a bunch of other, uh, of the brethren, brotherhood of man, fatherhood of God, hmm, nothing to it. Uh, Masonic statement there, if you don't know what I mean. But a lot of the uh, brethren out there, and um, they're Freemasons. Hmm. Uh, Billy Sunday was a Freemason. Another great uh, preacher and um, good personal friend of John D. Rockefeller. That's a problem. Um, of course, Billy Graham, he was a Freemason, but a lot of Baptist pastors, uh, you know, they're not, they're not big fans of Billy Graham for good reason. So I would agree with the uh, Baptists on that. Um, I remember actually knew a Baptist pastor years ago when we were talking about the whole thing of Billy Graham and he said that there was an older preacher. He was on his deathbed in the hospital, and uh, and he was laying there. And he and I guess somebody said something about Billy Graham or whatever, you know. And uh, what would you do if you get to heaven and Billy Graham's there, brother? And he he said, I'd look at the Lord and say, What's he doing here? <laughs> you know. And uh, I think I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, if you don't know about Billy Graham, please look into that guy. He was a snake, um, very ecumenical, uh, had uh, Catholics working for him at his evangelistic crusades. If a Catholic would come forward for salvation, they'd move him over to the Catholic priest. And the Catholic priest would say, come on back into the Vatican here. Let's get you back in. Um, Billy Graham regularly met with the Pope. Um, you don't meet with the Pope when you're saved. Okay? Uh, a lot of people are naive on those, along those lines. Well, maybe it's a chance to witness to him or something. Please. So, um, again, I'm open to anything. Anybody wants to send me proof that Ruckman was a Freemason, I'm not going to cover for him. I don't think he was. I think he had plenty of issues, which I would disagree with him on. But um, Freemason? Mm, I don't think he was a Freemason. I've never seen proof. And just, um, well, he, you know, the lapel thing, and he did this, and he did that. And that proves he, no, no, no. I would need to see actual, you know, uh, Masonic Lodge down there, when, and his name as part of the membership role or whatever, or some kind of thing like that. So, uh, but I knew another pastor um, down in Pennsylvania, Keith Schweitzer was his name, Mount Zion Baptist Church, and I went there for a little while, and he had a elderly member of their church that was a Freemason, and had the, you know, you get a Freemasonic license plate in the Keystone State, hmm, if you understand the, uh, master mason ritual with the stone which the builders rejected that becomes the head of the arch in freemasonry 
the shape is kind of a trapezoidal shape or something kind of upside down but um, and that's the keystone that's why Pennsylvania is the keystone state and the symbol there is that Masonic keystone a lot of Freemasonry in Pennsylvania uh, used to work around um, some high-level Freemasons never even knew it when I was at the Strasburg Railroad working there was a guy one of the owners of the railroad on the board I don't he wasn't the president but he was one of the big shots and uh, talked to him and things you know he was an older man I was just a teenager but you know whatever and, and I saw one time that he died and um, I mean the guy had all kinds of Masonic degrees and part of the Grand Council and you know Washington DC and all this other stuff Whoa, okay. I didn't know he was that high level of a Freemason. Pretty crazy. But uh, out there is the little river here. It's really, really low. Last time I was here it was a lot higher than that. I see a lot of the rocks now out there. Try to get some video of that. But um, yeah, this Mount Zion Baptist Church, they actually had a uh, yoga center next to it oh but don't worry because you know um, they'll they will uh, shut that down because of their hardcore preaching no it didn't happen um, but you know again I talked to him I talked to the pastor about it and I said about I noticed that there's an older man that's got a Masonic license plate what's that all about Oh, yeah, you know, I know that there's something there with the Freemasons or whatever. I said, oh, yeah, there's some things there with the Freemasons. And, um, you know, you probably should kick that guy out. Oh, yeah, well, that brother sounds like he's, yeah, he's a nicer old guy. He's making all these excuses, you know. And he said, I really don't understand Freemasonry. And I said, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll bring in a bunch of stuff, some study materials for you, and you can, I have a VHS tape going way back here. And uh, some books and things. I actually have a book by Charles Finney on the Freemason situation. And, um, oh yeah, I'd be really interested in that. I'm interested in learning. I went in and, hey, uh, Brother Brian, this is uh, Brother So-and-So here. And, um, you know, his dad's a Freemason. He'd like to see these materials. So you can let him watch that stuff first. Uh, okay, so he watched it. And his dad was a master mason. And um, he said he actually went to his father after he had seen these materials and things and read this stuff. And he said, went to his father the one time and he said, Hey, Dad, he said, what would you think if I said to you, Oh, Lord, my God, is there no help for the widow's son? And he said his father looked at him with this look and he said, Where did you hear that? <laughs> you know, oh, I don't know, just doing some study, whatever. Well, the Freemasons are a good organization. You know, he went off on the big thing and... He said his father got really shook up by what he learned. But uh, he got done with the materials and he handed them back to me and I went to the pastor and said, yeah, he's done with them. Here, your turn. Oh, well, you know, I can't right now. I just, you know. Mm -hmm. What about this pastor's ass like, act like uh, Freemasons? That's my question. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'd like to hear your stories out there. Have you had experiences like that? Uh, we walk a narrow road, brethren, behind me. A very narrow path. And you know, um, Hollywood likes to pervert the scriptures and steal from the Bible and use the Bible as their, you know, you get the best stories from scriptural type of things. And, uh, you know, the one of the favorite lines, at least in the past, was that, you know, you'd have the bad guy, the villain, and he's got all this power and whatever, and, and the good guy, yeah, he's more powerful, but the bad guy gets him tripped up and locked in a building or tied someplace or whatever, and, um, and then he goes after the damsel in distress or something, the bad guy, and it doesn't look so good for her. And the good guy, you know, he's he's locked up, you know, in a building or 
whatever else. And um, just at the last second, when all hope seems to be gone, the good guy breaks out and goes and saves the damsel in distress. Well, where do you think they got that storyline? Comes from the Bible. All right. Right now, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's not locked up anywhere, but uh, he has some plans for this world. And those plans include him kind of staying off the scene for a little while longer. And the uh, bad guy is coming after the damsel in distress. The uh, body of Christ, the bride of Christ. How can you be both body and bride at the same time? Well, read Ephesians chapter five, you'll understand. Um, spiritually, we are connected to Jesus Christ, but we are likened to a bride, a chaste virgin before the Lord. So, it's kind of a dangerous thing here. Get under this quick. It's just kind of hanging there. If that came down, it might knock some sense into me. That'd be terrible. There's a big mushroom down there. Conquer, whatever. I'm not even sure what that is. I'm not very versed on mycology. Study of mushrooms. Um, but getting back to this whole thing, you know, and it's not just Baptist pastors, by the way. I'm not just picking on the Baptists. I mean, because, you know, you get Methodists and whatever, they'll be openly um, Freemasonic. Even Mennonites. I remember there was a goods store, in, goods store in Schaeferstown, Pennsylvania. And first time I went in there was over in the men's clothing section. And um, they had belts, you know, leather belts. And one was a leather belt with blue Masonic emblem, square and compass on it. I thought, what's this doing in a Mennonite store? I made a, you know, stink about it. And next thing you know, it was gone the next time I came back. Um, we're supposed to be light, true light, not Masonic light. And we expose darkness. And um, right now we're, you know, we're kind of on the train tracks, so to speak, at the villain has us tied up and he's over there going, <laughs> you know, laughing. And we're down there going, help, help, help. <laughs> Calling for the superhero, our superhero, Jesus Christ. And uh, unfortunately, you start to notice that um, as time goes by, that a lot of the people that you thought were part of the bride of Christ actually are part, part of the enemy. And um, you know, these hirelings, these ministers of Satan, um, they will speak down to you. That's another Masonic thing that you can tell, that they'll you know, patronize you when you try to, you know, you're upset about something and you say, you know, I don't understand why this happened or why you did that or whatever. Mm, yes, okay, well, I understand your concerns. <laughs> but um, I don't really think that you understand exactly what's going on here. And I think that, you know, I think we need to be careful with some of the things that we study. You know, did you ever get that? <laughs> I know I have. Um, you know, I took a, uh, many years ago and I was really hardcore uh, into studying the whole New World Order and everything. Took a VHS tape um, into a pastor named Kelly Sensenig. I have videos on about him on my other channel, secondary channel, showing that he's not a Bible-believing Christian. He's a new virginist. Claims to be King James only, but he is okay with the new virgins. Whatever. But um, I took in a video because he was just George W. Bush, you know, all the way. Republican, you know. Support the brethren in the lodge, I mean, the, uh, in the Republican Party. And uh, took in this thing about the Bohemian Grove, and I said, you know, the Bushes attend this thing, and whatever. And he just, you know, looks at it, and he goes, so these people are saying that this thing goes on, or whatever? I said, no. I said, uh, he's not saying that it goes on. He went in, snuck into the thing, got video of it, and exposes the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be interested in watching something like this. So you can just take that video back home and... Why act like a Freemason? Hmm. 
kind of have to protect the brethren there. Again, if you don't understand Freemasonry, that's one of the things that they're required to do. They are required to protect their fellow Freemasons. Um, and you get into the high degrees, they'll cover up even as far as murder. They find out that a Masonic brother murdered somebody, they'll help cover it up. Hmm. And again, you know, look into the whole thing that happened to President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, JFK. He came out and he gave a speech about how secret societies are repugnant to a free people. And it wasn't long after that that uh, he was shot in the head. Speech is available, you can hear it for yourself. This kind of a weird situation there. Purely coincidental, of course. But, you know, and again, uh, you'll see this clicky nature to these church buildings. They get into the cliques. You know, you're in the pastor's inner circle. You go eat Sunday lunch at the pastor's church, or at the pastor's house, rather. And um, that's what they do. I've been in those circles. I've been, uh, I've gotten the pulpit mentions and everything else. Well, I just want to thank the Lord for what Brother Brian did this week and for the Brother Brian teaching Sunday school and, and got, you know, so many people saved and had a bunch of children come and they want King James Bibles now and praise the Lord for Brother Brian, you know. And when I left those church buildings, those people treated me like I was uh, a disease or something. I left the lodge, you see. Had to be blackballed. And I did a video years ago about the similarities between church buildings and uh, Masonic lodges. And there's a lot of similarities. A whole lot of similarities. Which is rather strange. But, um... Let me just get my little notebook out here make sure I covered all my points. Hopefully you're enjoying the hike. At least seeing it. Can't really enjoy it. You can kind of move your legs underneath the desk there or something or whatever you're watching this on or listening to it. Oh, and uh, okay, there's another one. Forgot that one. Another interesting one. Uh, Steven Anderson. Um, that little devil. I knew he'd crawl back out eventually. He's back on YouTube again. But, uh, you know, the scamdemic thing proved what he, that he was just a fake and a fraud. Well, he'll stand against the Antichrist. Uh, he didn't stand against the government. I did, but uh, a lot of people didn't. Again, you know, don't forget that. A lot of these Baptist pastors, they went completely along with the whole, all the foolish restrictions and everything else that happened during the scamdemic. So uh, be careful who you listen to. But anyhow, the weird thing about Steven Anderson, um, he, uh, um, his first son was named Solomon, which is a big name in Freemasonry in their Master Mason degree. King Solomon, Solomon's Temple. The building of the temple there is part of the Master Mason ritual that they go through. And then there's two pillars in Freemasonry, the pillar of mercy and the pillar of severity, I think. Mercy and severity, yeah. And uh, the one is named Jachin, the other is named Boaz. And yes, I know Solomon had two sons. One was named Jachin, the other was named Boaz, but uh, Freemasonry also has that. And um, ironically, one of the uh, Anderson's boys died. One of those twins died, which is very weird. And I have some serious questions about that. Don't know what to think about that. But, so you have another one there who I believe had some Masonic connections. Get down here so you can see this. Way down there. That's that next step. <laughs> so, oh, good place to come to. We love it back here. 
climbing on all these rocks here way up get down here a little bit more near this tree see way down there again definitely wouldn't want to fall off of this but, ugh. excuse me so anyhow um, I believe that's probably going to be it for this video uh, but let me know your thoughts let me know your experiences one more story just came on my mind here um, many years ago I uh, got a I think it was an email back when I still had my email address uh, publicly available before I was getting you know thousands of emails a day so I just had to say it's not my ministry I can't do emailing you know I mean there was an email I answered the one time took me four hours to answer it because he asked a lot of questions about the scriptures I was glad to do it at the time but as time has gone by I've had to kind of pare down what I'm doing so I can reach more people and the whole thing but anyhow, I had my email address publicly available back then, and I got an email from a guy that was a um, retired executive from Pfizer. Pfizer. Pfizer Pharmaceutical. I kid you not. And he actually had been going to a Baptist church, and he was telling me the story about how that they had this youth pastor come in, and that this youth pastor uh, turned out to be a pretty bad guy. And he ended up... Um, I don't remember if he was molesting some of the youths or whatever or messing around with some of the youths or what but uh yeah a baptist preacher again acting rather strange and um pretty weird and i remember another couple told me about how that their baptist pastor and his wife were actually getting involved with uh you know um, very promiscuous activities with other couples at the Baptist Church and again you know they went forward about it and they tried to tell people what was going on and some of the church members said kick him out but a lot of them said he should stay just unreal you'd think to yourself well there's no way I mean they would they would definitely kick a guy like that out they didn't want to so let me know your experiences down in the comments section. Try to read as many comments as I can. Get lots of comments in a day. And a lot of my day is spent away from the office. I have absolutely no ability right now to look at comments. I'm using a Sony camera on a little uh, selfie stick or whatever you call it. And um, so I don't have a phone, this bag, there's no phone in my bag. So I can hear my dog barking. But um, anyhow, but uh, yeah, let me know your stories. What's, what experiences have you had with uh, Baptists and Freemasons? Um, do you know of any that are Baptist and Freemason? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll walk down this way. And my dog hears me talking. He doesn't know if it's me or not. Uh, the Bible says about my sheep hear my voice. <laughs> well, my dog hears my voice right now. He's not much of a sheep, I guess. He just hears my voice and he doesn't know if it's me or not. He's barking. So... But just a beautiful spot here. I always enjoy coming out here. It's the Boys River Trail is where we're at. If you want to look that up. But uh, that should do it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.